This video should have been out sometime last week. Unfortunately, I forgot to turn my microphone on the first time I filmed it. Welcome back to Craft Computing, everyone. As always, I'm Jeff, and today we're talking external SSDs, but not from a general computing standpoint, but from a cinematography standpoint. The camera right behind me is what I've been using to film all of my videos since the beginning of the year, obviously with the exception of this one. It is my Zcam E2 4K cinema camera, and Epo's Box and I actually did a walkthrough of my entire cinema rig back at CES in January, and he did such a fantastic job on that, I'll just link his video right up there if you want a full rundown on what's inside this rig. A very quick rundown on the Zcam E2 is it is a 4K cinema camera capable of capturing up to 4K at 160 FPS, and that's a big reason of why I picked this thing up. So why are we talking cameras and SSDs today? Well, the Zcam E2 does have a card slot on board, but unfortunately it's a CFast 2.0 card slot. And if you know anything about CFast 2.0 cards, you know they are downright highway robbery. Luckily, the Zcam E2, as well as the Blackmagic Pocket Cine 4K and 6K cameras, can also accept an SSD over a USB-C interface, literally costing only about 20% as much as a CFast 2.0 card. Since I picked up the Zcam back in November, I've been using the Samsung T5 SSDs. I have two of them at 500 gigabytes each, and they cost me about 100 bucks a pop, and they've been working very, very well for all of my video storage needs. Since my video projects rarely go over 500 gigabytes, I really have never looked for an alternative solution. But Lexar did reach out to me right after CES and asked me if I wanted to review the all new SL100 Pro USB-C SSD. Being a tech enthusiast, what caught my eye about the Lexar SL100 Pro was that it's not just another MSATA drive stuck into a nice aluminum enclosure. In fact, this is a PCI Express M.2 drive stuck inside a nice aluminum enclosure. And the speed boost should be about double what I'm getting off the Samsung T5s to this point. So while the speed on the SL100 Pro should be about double what it is on the Samsung T5, does it matter for a video workflow? And would I see any performance gains in my normal daily work? That's what I wanted to find out today. Testing for today is going to be fairly straightforward. Right here in the top window, I have my local NVMe drive on my PC, and down in the bottom window, right now I have my Samsung T5 drive. Later on, we'll have the Lexar SL100. Try to keep up. I'm gonna copy this 40 gigabyte file over to the external SSD to check the write speeds, and then copy it back to check the read speeds. And this will all be based on the time it takes to copy that file. So for the Samsung T5, on your mark, get set, go. Lucky for me, I have plenty of beer to shoot these videos as many times as I need. So this started out right about, I'd say 345 megabytes per second. It has slowed down just a little bit to 320 megabytes per second, but that is plenty fast on the write speeds as my Zcam E2 can only write at a max of about 310 megabit per second. And 40 gigabytes down, and I'll give you the time right above me right here. And then at the end, I'll show you all the times put together. And now only thing left to do is to copy that file back. So one, two, three, and go. So I do have the packaging for both of these drives right here, and uh, I'm gonna go ahead and read out specs for the Samsung T5. It says up to 540 megabytes per second speed transfer over USB 3.1 Gen 2, which is exactly what I have this plugged into right now. Uh, we're seeing a max of about 465 megabytes per second. So not too shabby, but also not quite what they say on the back of the packaging either. And there we go, that one was sitting right about 450 megabytes per second the entire time. So pretty decent performance out of the Samsung T5. Now we're gonna unplug that drive and plug in the Lexar SL100 Pro and see how it fares. All right, three, two, one, you know how it goes. Right off the bat here, you can see it is significantly faster at just under 500 megabytes per second on average. Uh, we're seeing it bounce between, I'd say 505 and what, 495? So, pretty decent. And there's the interesting result that I was waiting for. You see that dip right there? That means we filled the cache on the NVMe drive inside the SL100 Pro. That means you get burst writes of between 15, 16 gigabytes at full speed, at very much close to that 500 megabytes per second. But then your write speeds drop pretty much in half down to about 245 megabytes per second which if you remember correctly, is actually slower than the Samsung T5. What's gonna be interesting about these discrepancies is the smaller your file, the more advantage you have over the Lexar, but the less real world results actually matter because you're only gonna be saving yourself maybe about an extra 30 seconds. The longer your writes are, the T5 might actually be faster. 
And obviously the write speeds don't really matter much for this camera in particular because, well, it can only shoot a max of about 310 megabit per second or just under 40 megabytes per second. So we're never gonna saturate the write buffer on the Lexar SL100 Pro. But if you have a much more demanding camera, maybe that's something that comes up. And of course, we have to write this file back now to get our read speeds, which is actually the more interesting metric to me because I often find myself sitting there twiddling my thumbs for about 15 minutes while I'm copying footage off of the drives. So let's see how this one goes now. Spiking all the way up to about 715 megabytes. I like it. Uh-oh, we're falling down just a little bit. Back down to 600 from 715. Well, it looks like we're gonna stay right about 600. Oh, spoke too soon. <laughs> and there are drops to, what, 320, 330? Well, that was an interesting little dip. Much more inconsistent, much more inconsistent on the speeds. So that definitely made for some interesting test results. Remember how I said that the larger your file size is, the less of a difference the PCI Express drive would make because of the small file cache? Well, in fact, the Samsung T5 drive actually caught up over a 40 gigabyte transfer, beating the SL100 by a solid six seconds and averaging 310 megabytes per second versus the 297 on the SL100 Pro. Read speeds were a completely different story. Although the Lexar did struggle with consistency of its file speed, it still very handily beat the T5, 562 megabytes per second versus 440 on the Samsung T5. So where does that leave us? On one hand, we've got the Samsung T5 with its MSATA internals. And on the other hand, we have the Lexar SL100 Pro with its PCI Express built in. Honestly, both of these are very, very good performing drives, and you'd be hard pressed to find a reason to buy one over the other, considering they're both $100 for the 500 gigabyte models. For video work, honestly, I would stick with the Samsung T5 because consistency for video work is king. I know exactly what I'm going to get out of this drive as far as read and write performance every single time I plug it in. There's no read buffer or write buffer to work about. The drive just works at full speed all the time. For the SL100 Pro, I recommend you go for a more general purpose computer computing route, maybe just some additional storage for your laptop, or maybe a Steam games cache, mainly because of that write buffer that's on this disk. Uh, once you pass about 16 gigabytes, it falls dramatically down, in fact being beat straight out by the Samsung T5. But the read speeds are very impressive at 560 megabytes per second, although not the most consistent thing that I've ever tested, but still solid enough to definitely get a recommendation from me. If you guys are interested in picking up either a Samsung T5 or a Lexar SL100 Pro, they're both available for about $100 on Amazon, and I will have affiliate links down in the video description below. And on your way down there, make sure to like this video and subscribe to Craft Computing if you haven't done so already. This was going to be a Friday Flights video, but again, since I'm so good at directing silent movies, I think we'll just say thank you guys so much for watching this one, and as always, I will see you in the next video. Cheers, guys. Thank you.